And we're back with Sam Yen of SAP. <laughs> now we're going to, we actually talked about design. So if I end up releasing these separately, check out the design podcast, a lot of interesting stuff there. We're now we're going to actually talk about SAP because there's a bunch of stuff I want to ask you about, including your prominent role in the Leonardo stuff. Um, now, you have actually two hats you wear with SAP now, right? So what are those? Yeah, so I'm the chief design officer, but I'm also the managing director for SAP in Silicon Valley. Right. So anyone in, in the Palo Alto area knows who you are then in SAP. Yeah, I, I, I look at it as, a, as an honor because I'm a San Francisco native, Bay Area native. Yeah. So it's, it's great to be able to represent SAP. So a couple of things. First of all, you, you used a slide in your presentation today I hadn't seen from... Was that guy that trashed you in Fast Company? No, it wasn't Fast Company. It was Peter Nilsson okay. uh, from for a company called a software company called Farewell. Oh, it was Farewell. Yes. Any any did someone pick up on that in the media or something or? Yeah, that was the Fast Company article. Okay, yeah. so they picked up on it That's there. Right. That's right. What, what he said? He said. He said. He said. Look at SAP. not safe for work, folks. It is a bleeping disaster. And and this was fairly far into your into your sort of UI overhaul too, right? I think it was pretty unfair because they showed all the SAP GUI screens when they said that. Oh, that's not, and they didn't bother to show the award-winning Fiori designs that you guys have been talking about. We 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 edited uh, that uh, after the fact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might need to send him some of those so he can take a look at what he's criticizing. Man, he's. Yeah, in, in my slide, I show our, our, our screen side by side, and I'll let other people judge. Yeah, you're like, have a look at this, dude. We've come a little bit of a ways from there. But it actually is interesting because when you took on this whole thing, I think I described it as a hot potato. But, but now it's changed a lot because now you've actually managed to, not just you alone, but SAP in general under, under your vision of this has sort of become... Now, Bill McDermott's talking it up like SAP can be a leader and that he views this as one of the user experience, one of the key areas of the company now. Yeah, I, I think it's it comes directly from our customers. Uh, we, we, we talked about the consumerization of IT and the expectation is the, the stuff that you use in, in, in your work life should be as easy to use in, in your personal life. Um, so the expectations are, are, are definitely higher. It's, it's, it's no longer a nice to have. It's table stakes uh, when, you're, when you're trying to get customers to adopt your, your, your solutions. Before we get into Leonardo and a little bit of a status check, the other thing I did not know, which I thought you told really well today, was how how Hasse Plotner, who's been pretty influential in the design push at SAP, how this whole thing got sparked for him. Because you were saying to me that uh, in the audience that a number of years ago, he discovered design thinking approaches and and it really resonated with him because you said it gave him a language to talk about what he had actually done when he was one of the five founders. Yeah, I think that was that was the that was the key insight for him. He was reading this Business Week article and the whole the whole What year was that? It was 2004. Okay. And I don't know if you the, the full story, but uh, there was an executive at the time named Zia Yusuf. Yes. And and he 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 read this article on the plane over to Sapphire. And when he saw Hasso in the green room right before his keynote, he said, hey, Hasso, take a look at this article. And Hasso read through the article, and then he went on stage. And I, you know, this was before I joined SAP, but yeah. the, the story goes, he actually brought the magazine on stage. And wow. he went a little bit off topic, which he never does, I know. So during shocking, the keynote. shocking. Um, but but he, he talked about, you know, hey, this great article that he read um, uh, about, about design thinking. Um, and shortly afterwards, he was introduced to David Kelly, um, who was who was on the cover and and and, and spoke in the article, and uh, and David uh, was I mean, obviously had founded IDEO and 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 had done that for quite a while, but he was just starting up what would be later known as the D School, um, mm -hmm. and also had an opportunity to get involved in some of the funding for that. Um, and long story short, you know now it's called the Hasso Plattner Institute for Design. And, and you were saying also that that it resonated with Hasso because in the 70s when they were building SAP, they kind of worked in that way. They worked on a customer site, like coding on site. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, that's why he resonated so much with design thinking. Um, yeah. Everything he was reading is like, this is what we did. You know, we used to go on, on site with the customer. We used to uh, follow the people around. We used to understand what their jobs were. We used to code on site. We used to pull people back, you know, at the end of the day and say, hey, does this work for you? And they would say we were totally wrong. And then we'd say, okay, we got to iterate. We, he didn't call it iterate, but we'd have to recode it. In a very primal way, they were already doing that. They, really they, were, they were doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because I thought in this year's keynote, I picked up on a little bit of nostalgia for him saying like, I can't code anymore. Like he was kind of saying that not that he can't code, but that the way that 
everything sort of evolved now in terms of how the sensibilities, but he still sort of wants to see that imbued in the software. Yeah, he, he does. And I don't know if you caught it in the keynote, but he, he, he talked about this build tool that, that, that we're doing. Yeah, and, yeah. And what he liked about that was uh, you know, it, it was it was a tool that actually captured some of the design thinking principles and practices directly in the in the technology that people would use to develop software. Right. So so tell us just a little more about that, because that was a that that was part of how Leonardo was framed in, in the keynotes. Build, build got a fairly prominent mention. How do you see that impacting customers? Yeah, so, so maybe I'll take a, a little bit of a step back and just kind of describe Leonardo first. Right? Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, so look, SAP has always been known as an enterprise software company. Right. Um, and, you know, over the, especially over the last couple of years, we've been talking a lot about technology to improve enterprise software, you know, things like advanced analytics and predictive, big data in memory, yeah. so on and so forth, Mach machine learning, of course, IoT. Um, so we're certainly bringing those technologies to improve our existing software. Um, but I think for the first time, we've actually created uh, a brand uh, where we take all those innovation technologies and put it together. And that's what Leonardo represents, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's as Hasso said in his keynote, it's, it's a toolbox. With, with I called these. it the next generation kitchen sink, which is next not, okay. well, which is not totally fair, but yeah, sure. But, but the point being, it's, an, it's sort of an umbrella for a lot of cool stuff that's happening. Absolutely. And, I mean, and you could think of the first, you know, the enterprise applications as somewhat of an off the shelf. You know, I, I realize you have to configure and implement. Yeah, it. yeah. But, but this is much more of a do it yourself type of model, right? Here's a bunch of technologies and, 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 right. and, and you could do, you could imagine your digital future with all these technologies. But, um, you know, we, we, didn't, we don't want to just give you a bunch of technology for technology's sake. What we want to do is we, we, we actually want to co-invent, imagine the future with you together and use what we've been talking about, design thinking as this methodology uh, to help discover their digital future together with, with customers. And we want to walk, you know, as we engage with customers, we want to engage in a design thinking methodology and build is a great tool to be able to do that because we, you know, again, we've, we've captured a lot of the artifacts and the processes uh, that we use internally, actually. And build is actually a tool that we use internally to develop our software now. Um, and we, we use that as uh, not only the methodology, but the framework in which we engage with you. So that would mean that if a customer is looking at perhaps going down the path with, with a, you know, some type of, you know, IOT app or whatever it might be that fits into this framework, that you you would come on site and do this type of design thinking format with them using the build tool is that yeah absolutely absolutely so so we've uh, there's like a three step framework um, okay. uh, th or three step process the the first step is explore you know we mm -hmm. would we would bring customers together on a one day workshop to try to identify you know what do they want to do you know not necessarily from a technology perspective but from a business and a digital transformation perspective got it we try to in that explore workshop scope it down into some short term deliverables where we could add value in a short amount of time. The second phase is called um, discover, design, and prototype. Um, so in a, in a short amount of time, we're talking about a couple weeks max, uh, we want to take that scoped down scenario and go through a design thinking process with Build where we're actually creating interactive prototypes of what the solution is, getting mm. feedback from the end users using the build tool. And by the end of that second phase, come up with an interactive prototype um, in Build. And then the third phase is deliver, where you know by the end of and, and again we, this is a process that we want to do very very rapidly and, and, and on the order of a couple of weeks, um, be able to come up with a fully functional um, solution on an SAP landscape. And the one thing I really wanted to get across to listeners who I don't know if you caught the Sapphire keynotes or not, but I didn't understand until this conference talking to Toby who works on your team um, that that really you're your design methodology is going to be at the core of all these new implementations. Like this is a significant deal for you guys as well, because what it means is you're going to have to figure out how to scale up what you're doing to meet the demand for that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the old model is we have a bill of materials uh, or, or not. A, we have a list of products that we sell and the salespeople would engage and say, you know, this, mm -hmm. this is what we could sell to you. Uh, what's different now is we need to kind of understand Oh, you know, what is your business need and what does your mm -hmm. digital future look like? And we have to kind of go through that exploration discovery, you know, the, the, the prototyping right. and, 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 and that stuff. And then we, we then kind of sell the services and products and technologies uh, to the customer. Change in sales culture also, which is a topic probably for a whole nother podcast, but that's, that's another piece of the puzzle. But, but what you mentioned is, um, it, it is, um, also, in terms of uh, a go-to-market and an engagement model, yeah. it's, it's 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 something where we dramatically need to scale the design competency within our organization as well. Yeah, well, that'll be a good challenge for you. So let's do a little progress report on where you stand 
I don't know how many years it's been since you took this on. Where do you think we are now in terms of your view of SAP customers to user experience standpoint? Because when you started, the idea was the current user experience is unacceptable and has to change. Where are we now? I think we've made significant progress in terms of what uh, Fiori is versus what we had before. Um, especially for customers that are now going to S4 HANA and S4 HANA Cloud. That's the de facto experience. Um, we you were saying there's no uh, SAP GUI in the S4 HANA Cloud. So that's in S4 a, HANA Cloud, we finally eliminated SAP GUI. Um, look, there's, uh, I, I cited a number today. There, there's hundreds of thousands of transactions that, that we've supported in the yeah, business suite. In, in a lot of past. screens. Um, we, with S4 HANA, we've tried to eliminate the things that aren't useful anymore. We've tried to also reimagine what the scenarios would be and, and, and create um, you know, much more useful Fiori applications for that. Um, but there's there's still going to be some things uh, that are necessary uh, that that still exist from the, from before. You know, we've gone from SAP GUI at least to to web uh, GUI, so everything you know gets served through the browser at this point. And we've also uh, created a, a visual harmonization um, effort, uh, which which uh, which which helps um, bring uh, bring the gap between web GUI and the and the and the and the pure kind of native Fiori apps, if you will, uh, to to a certain state. Um, so, so, so I'm super happy to see that, and, and quarter by quarter by quarter, you see you know, more and more, uh, you know, moving into into full, fully kind of fully native Fiori, which which is great. Over the last year, especially, we've expanded that uh, that philosophy, uh, and we and we say, look, Fiori is a design language first and foremost, and then it, it can be implemented in different ways. So it could be implemented in UI five, also kind of in web GUI, but with our partnership with Apple as well, kind of you know the Fiori design language could also be implemented native on a native mobile device if 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 if, if that's what you choose. What I'm really excited about is actually going forward, and you know this notion of machine learning and different ways of interacting right. as well. So. Um, I think we're, we're if, again, if you look at the consumer experience, consumer applications um, as an indicator of what's going to happen in, in the enterprise space. Uh, and if you look at, you know, I've, I've got a 10 year old and an eight year old. If you look at how kids interact right. with technology these days, I think this notion of a conversational UI is becoming more and more prevalent. Well, and, and in, in Hasso's keynote, he was belly aching about the screens, the SAP screens that still exist. And, and it sounded to me like the implications were a real screen by screen review that that might feed into this sort of AI and and voice and copilot. We haven't talked about copilot yet. We probably should, like that. That maybe that overhaul would would benefit from looking a couple steps ahead and saying, you know, maybe we don't need to have these screens if we do a voice enabled way of approaching it. Or I, I think that's certainly the case for a certain set of scenarios. Yeah. Right. If, if you remember when we rolled out Fiori. Uh, we started off with only 25 apps, uh, but we chose those carefully with our customers because those 25 apps um, represented, you know, those 25 apps for most organizations touched probably over 95% of the actual users, right? They were the employee self-service, the manager self-service types of applications. Um, and uh, and we could do the same thing with voice, right? I mean, if, if you look at those things, right. I want to take next Monday and Tuesday off. You know, that's that's w what you should be able to type or what you right. should be able to say instead of going through, even with Fiori, going through a number of different screens. Little do, little do we know how complicated those things can be are logistically, right? Like that they're, that it sounds simple to the human to say I, I want two days off, but for for the machine, the machine has to check availability of this and can this person cover for them and blah blah blah. And a a absolutely, so. but but if you but if you look at those things, you know, especially you know, we, we've also tried to start roll rolling. We, we we've also started with with our core, and then we've rolled out Fiori to other areas like success factors, and we're still working on areas like Ariba, Concur, and so on and so forth. But if you th think about conversational UI. You could quickly, you know, there, you know, the, the the challenge with the previous one was there was there was already a user interface developed on user, you know, UI technologies and and all of that stuff. Conversational UI, we're starting with a blank slate. So right. those those commonly used things like I want to take a vacation, fine, that's in HR. I want right. to buy something, okay, that's purchasing, that's Ariba. Right. Yeah, you know, what's my, True. Uh, you know, I I want I need to take a trip, that's Concur. So that's a, it's a, maybe it's a faster way to actually have a broader impact as well. You know, what's really interesting about this conversation too is you think about like how technology companies can make a mistake sometimes by, oh, I'm behind in this, so I'm going to frantically try to catch up. So it's like, well. I'm behind on screens modernization, so I'm going to frantically try to, you know, improve all these screens. Then you take a step back, and you're like, well, actually, maybe I should try to think around a few corners here, 
and the fact that instead of refreshing all these screens, maybe dump half of them. Right. Like, like, like reimagine this thing. God, I hate it. I can't believe I used that word, but like, you know, look at it from a whole different perspective of like, how are we going to interact with the future? It's going to be really different anyway. Um, that was exactly the same advice that Hasso gave us yesterday. Uh, Interesting. It, <laughs> nice. Good job, John. I like my future as a consultant now. It's no, nice. He, no, that's exactly what he said. He, he said, uh, he said, look, you have to, you have to look at how the experience can reimagine the future, um, and, and not just solve, you know, the problems of the past. Yeah. Um, so, so, and, 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 um, especially we, we haven't even talked about machine learning, but especially with machine learning that adds more context, uh, than, right. than, than, than what we were able to do in the past and, and memory and, and, and can connect your interactions between different systems. Um, those are the types of things that, you know, if, if you put that, um, all together, you could really reimagine the experience. What was the language you used? It was like from problem solver to problem, Pro from, from, from problem solving to problem finding problem finding. Yeah. So, so this is kind of, yeah, the next step of that is sort of imagining new yeah. scenarios. And, and uh, in the, in this conversational UI, uh, Copilot is, is, uh, is, is the tool that, uh, right. that we, we, we talked about and we announced uh, at, at Sapphire and, and, and maybe just, just a, a quick second. So people understand what Copilot is. It's a combination of, you know, the actual user experience itself, right? It's mm -hmm. going to look, you know, very familiar to people that are, you know, like a texting or a messaging type of interface. Uh, which will allow you to, to connect with people, but also bots, right? Um, right. And then, and then it's, and then it's a bot framework as well, right? So it's, uh, mm -hmm. it allows developers to quickly, you know, c create, you know, different types of, as, as Amazon calls it, skills, uh, that can connect into, you know, different lines of business areas within SAP. Right. But also into third party applications as well. So I, th I think it's really powerful to, to think about, what the experience is and create a coherent experience and a personality. Um, but then create the development framework where it's easy to create the bots and, and make sure it's very, very open. Um, so that it interfaces with external, uh, types of, um, um, interfaces as well, but also leverages the bots that people create, not only for SAP, but also for external systems. Yeah. And so I think one of your biggest challenges is going to be to communicate how that's going to work for not just customers that are adopting everything you're doing, and moving to S4, but some of the customers that are a little further behind on releases and like inspiring them and that, and how do you, how do you collaborate with them too? So you still have a hot potato, I think in that regard, but, but wow, a lot of change in a few years. So it's going to be interesting to see what you make of it. Yeah. That's why I love the industry that we're in. Yeah. It keeps moving and uh, the chat, there's always plenty of challenges ahead. Sure is. Sometimes it's fun to just to take a quick peek back and say, well, wow, we've really gone yeah. a, long, a long way, but, uh, but there's always more to do. Well, from swear words to awards is, is a, you know, at least progress, right? So at least you can counter swears with awards now and say, Hey, you hate our friggin' UI. Well, we won this award this year. So you must be crazy. We'll try to you stay know? humble. <laughs> well, good luck, man. Appreciate your time. Thank Thanks. you so much.